Nathana here, pastor at Peace in Otsego. I want to take a moment this afternoon and just talk to you a little bit about our participation as a church in our synod and our support of our synod. You're going to be seeing some information around peace this year, uh, some pictures and other things talking about our great heritage. That's a way that we are going to refer to uh, a campaign, an effort that we have going on to encourage you and to share information with you about our participation with other churches around the United States in this thing that we call a denomination or a synod. So I'm going to step back for a moment here, uh, just take a step back from that point and spend a little time explaining to you what's going on. So peace, as you probably can know or, or guess, depending on what your background is, is part of a group of churches that we call a synod or a denomination. Now, a lot of churches are maybe part of networks or affiliations or even denominations. There's a little bit of difference between them, among them. Uh, typically, denominations have stricter requirements. They provide more accountability and oversight for the churches involved, um, but they also then bring greater benefits to those individual churches. A lot of churches these days have left denominations and maybe are just part of a network or an association. And those networks and associations provide some benefits, but they're also a lot looser in terms of the, uh, the requirements, the oversight, the connection that the churches have with one another. Now, Peace has been part of the Wisconsin Evangelical Lutheran Synod, a denomination that has been in existence since 1848. Peace has been part of that since it started in 1951. As part of the Wisconsin Evangelical Lutheran Synod, Peace provides offerings, gifts, back to the Synod, and the Synod gives us some benefits. So first, let me just tell you a little bit about the offerings or the gifts that Peace provides to the Synod. Now, one thing I think that's worth knowing about Peace's participation in the Wisconsin Synod is that it's totally free, that it is our own willingness and our desire to be part of it. We're under no obligation to work with these other churches. We are under no requirement to work with these other churches. Uh, we have placed in our constitution that we are always going to be part of a denomination or a synod that teaches certain things. Um, but that's on us, right? That's our own free choice. And we will continue to be part of a denomination or a synod as long as all of the people who are at peace, the people who are supporting peace with their offerings and their time, the people who are carrying out this ministry together that we call Peace Lutheran Church in Otsego, all as long as all of us want to be part of a denomination or a sin. Now that's worth talking about or worth pointing out, right? We don't have to give any offerings or gifts, just as you individually are free to give as you wish in support of the ministry of peace. We together as a congregation are free. We are free to give gifts or not. Um, that's different. Some denominations actually require dues or fees to be part of that denomination. Some of the networks and the associations have the same kind of requirement. We don't. Now, it's true that if we didn't use our gifts uh, to freely give back in support of our work together, that would raise some questions. And some people would probably be wonder what we were doing. But if we made a choice to say, you know, we don't... Um, we don't have that kind of money right now, or we don't have that, that opportunity, we just don't have that willingness in our heart, something like that. If there's some work going on that we needed to fund, we could do that. So there's the first thing about our gifts and our offerings. It's free. It's our own free choice because we want to work with our other churches. Now, that being said, that's the benefit that we give to our synod or to our denomination our own free offerings. What do we get in return? What are the benefits that are provided for us by being part of this denomination? Well, you could put it down into four things, even though it spreads out into more than that. The four chief benefits that we have from being part of a denomination or this synod are, first, worker training. 
The Wisconsin Synod provides one of the uh, unique educational systems in the country. We still have four schools that carry as their primary purpose the production of workers for the church. Right? We have schools from all levels, high school, college, and the seminary or the graduate level that produce church workers. Now that's something different. A lot of church groups, a lot of associations, a lot of synods have had to let their schools that primary produce church workers go. They maybe get to the point where only the seminary is working to really produce church workers. And even at that level, they might have expanded the philosophy or the vision of the school so that it's preparing also um, educated non-church workers for other secular fields. Um, it might produce, be producing, you know, for example, counselors who have graduate degrees. Uh, it might be producing even Christian business people at a graduate level. Right? So there's other seminaries or higher graduate level institutions have even expanded. But there are very few high schools and colleges left, if at all, in the country that primarily produce church workers. And our college, Martin Luther College, is devoted to just producing pastors and teachers, uh, giving pastors the basic teaching that they need to get into seminary, preparing teachers for church work, and then staff ministers all who have, are going to be working in the Wisconsin Senate, right? So that's a very unique thing that we still have going on for us. And we have two high schools that are devoted or the primary purpose is to prepare individuals to go to Martin Luther College and become a worker for the Wisconsin Senate. That can bring some challenges naturally, as I'm sure you can guess or maybe you've even seen in your life, but it brings huge blessings. So that's the primary benefit. That's number one benefit of being part of the Wisconsin Synod. Uh, number two is home missions. Together we do something that we could not probably do individually. You know, Peace might love to start a church, say, in Kalamazoo. I think that would be a great opportunity for us. Uh, Kalamazoo doesn't have any Wisconsin Synod churches, and we, we've got a, an empty space there for the gospel. Um, at the same time, it would be a challenge for us. Definitely. But around the United States, all of our churches are working together. And each year we start about five brand new churches, just from scratch. And then we've got about five churches that are expanding their current ministry. Right? They start a second site, or they start a whole, they get another uh, a pastor on who can really help the ministry boost up to the next level. But in any case, all of these churches work together so that we can expand our home missions efforts. Then the third benefit would be um, world missions. Right? Peace is probably not going to send me or somebody else over to India or China or Africa to start a church uh, or to be part of the mission efforts over there. We don't have a whole lot of training. We're not sure what we're doing. But together, as a synod, we have a, a group of people who are devoted to doing that, to running around the world and starting churches. And now we've got, I think, about 70,000 people who are uh, receiving training, support, assistance, and shepherding from Wisconsin Synod pastors and missionaries. Uh, so that's a really cool thing that we get to do, world missions together. And then the fourth benefit is one that we see practically on a more regular basis. It's congregational support. It's the resources and the guidance, the training to keep our congregations healthy and moving forward in ministry. We're going to see one of those benefits this year as we're bringing on a uh, congregational consultant. We're looking forward to having him and his input uh, in our congregational life. There's all kinds of ministry divisions. There's about 10 to 15 of them that uh, receive very small amounts of funds from us and the other thousand congregations in the Wisconsin Synod. Together, then, these congregations um, are able to provide you know, just a few workers who can help us in our congregational work. So those are the four major benefits of us being part of a synod. We give freely to the synod. That's where you know, our, our work or our side of the deal comes in, and they provide us with that, those four gifts. So now, what is this Our Great Heritage thing that we're doing this year, and why are we doing it? Well, peace has always tried 
to be part of the Synod's work to the tune of 11% of our regular income. Right, so we receive offerings and we take about 11% of that right off the top and we send that on to the Synod. We feel like it's important for us to give first to the Synod just as we ha would have any member or any participant in Peace's Christian life give first as well. It may not be to the same 10%. Maybe you give 2 or 3 or 5 or 8% of your annual income. Whatever it is, I pray that you sit down, you take some time, and you think about that. You do some math out for the year. You see how you gave last year, and you maybe make a concerted effort to put the Lord first in your life and then to see how he will bless you as you take his work seriously, as you get your, get, commit yourself to that work. Right, so that's how you give. Now, peace does the same thing. In fact, every year as we sit down for budgeting time, we, we review that and say, how did we give last year? How can we give first to the work of our synod this year? Now, this year, as we looked over our budget, over the financial trends over the last couple of years, and we talked about how we can best balance our local ministry with our ministry around the world, we said, well, I think we need to make a few adjustments. We're doing pretty well in terms of balancing our spending on our facility, on our ministry. We're spending about 50% of our income on our, on our staff. We're spending about 30 on the facility, and we'd like to keep it around 20 for then ministry activities. But we're getting a little out of balance in terms of spending more money or sending more money away, and we need a little more money to keep here for local ministry. Um, you know, inflation and everything else just takes eats up more of the growth in giving than we can actually um, be able to expand on a regular basis. All right, so we are reducing for the 2018 calendar year, we're reducing the amount that we send off to the Synod from 11% to 8%. That's just a, a static number that we've calculated out. Right, we said so the total budget for the year, and we said about 8% we're going to send off to the Synod. Now, we know though that many people find that the work of the Synod is really important, and they are committed to that work. And so we want to make sure that we provide an alternative means or an alternative door for people to support the work of the Synod. You know, if you will find it in your heart, if you are committed to this gospel ministry that we carry out as churches, to ministerial training, to home and world missions, uh, and to congregational support. If that's a big thing for you, we want to make sure that you have the opportunity to continue to support that. And that's what the Our Great Heritage campaign is all about. It's providing you an extra door or an extra way where you can support the work of the sin. So you're going to see these signs around church, and you're going to see there's a a website with a little bit of this information on it. Uh, you got this video now I can share with you, all explaining what we do together. Your offerings that you designate our great heritage or special missions will for the 2018 calendar year be kept aside and then sent to the Synod in their entirety. That is our intent and that's what we're going to do with you. We're going to do that up to about $6,000 on top of our normal giving. So our CMO, our, our offering for the Synod this year is going to be around $12,000. And if we would like to, we're asking or we're hoping to raise another 6000 in offerings over and above our regular offerings to send off to the Synod. Now we realize that this means that if you are a person who regularly gives to the Ministry of Peace, and you say, I regularly give to Peace's ministry X amount of dollars, and then as the new calendar year rolls around, and I sit down and I think about my giving, I say, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you know two percent more, or three percent more, because I received maybe a small bump in pay. But I know that inflation eats up, you know, two and a half, three percent at least of Peace's income. And if Peace doesn't receive that slight increase in giving, they have to find another place to make up the difference. 
Right? Um, and so if you've gone through that math already and you've said, here's what I'm going to give for the year, that giving is all going to go to Peace's regular budget. Uh, that won't affect the regular budget at all, and our normal gift to the Synod will come out of that. If you choose to give over and above that, and you designate it our great heritage or special missions, that money will go to the Synod in support of our work together. If you have any questions about this, I want you to feel free to get a hold of me or talk to Jim Winkle, our financial secretary for the year. We are both excited about our work together and thankful for the work of our Synod in spreading the gospel of Jesus. I know that's what I love to do with you as we work together to transform people in our community and to form families. What a great blessing we have to carry out this ministry. And together, the Wells is calling people with Christ from every nation. God bless you as you head through 2018, and I look forward to seeing you around.